Hey guys, Cyrus here. Today I'm going to be doing something slightly different. Uh, I'm going to be doing a start off point for script localization. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more tutorials on scripting specifically, but I wanted to get this out of the way first because this is probably the most complicated part of it, and I want to explain it f like before I go into some of the scripts we're going to play with in future weeks. So. First of all, we're going to talk about localization. So in a multiplayer system for Armour 3, you've got your server and you've got your clients. And the way that it works is that the server has within itself all of a set of variables. So let's say it's got x equals 10 and y equals 11 something like that so when your client connects to the server it'll connect and then the server will send it x equals 10 and y equals 11 now it might not send exactly that uh, because the server's going to send things like unit locations how much health they have stuff like that uh, it can also send x equals 10 and y equals 11, uh, and we'll go into how variables work in a future tutorial. But one thing that it doesn't send is scripts, or rather how scripts have been executed on the server. So for example, let's say we have a script over here that will run on the server. And this script says, if I'm the server, x equals 10. But if I'm not the server, x equals 15. And this is where script localization becomes important because this script might be called, well, let's just call it a script.sqf. And that gets called when the mission starts. But the thing is that the server calls this, but when the client joins, the server doesn't send it that x is equal to 10. What the server sends it is run this script. So the client runs this script and goes, well, I'm not the server, so therefore x isn't equal to 10, x is equal to 15. And this basically lets you have different things going on on the server than are going on on the clients. And that's, in essence, the basics of how script localization works in Armour 3. There are ways to get around it. So, for example, there's a function that can be called that basically makes scripts that are called on the server. Uh, the outcomes of those scripts are run on all clients. Uh, we're going to deal with that in a future tutorial as well. But I thought I'd just explain this little basic concept first before I go into anything too complicated past this point. Uh, while we're here too, I'm going to have a quick talk about the order in which scripts occur. So I'm going to drop in a, a section from the Armour 3 wiki. And this just basically goes over the order in which everything is called. Uh, now, you don't need to know what most of this means, but basically the way that this works is, first of all, it's different between single player and multiplayer. These green sections are when the init file is called in single player, but then in multiplayer it's called last. And this is important to remember. Uh, if you're making something for single player and you want scripts to do funky things, it will work differently if you're doing it in multiplayer. But anyway, the order in which things go is basically you're going to do a bunch of pre-compiling and setting up of event handlers, which we'll talk about. Then uh, things in the Eden Editor's attributes. So if you set an attribute in the Eden Editor, like takes no damage or stuff like that, that gets called. 
Then your object initialization fields. So those are the little boxes that say init in your Armor 3. So for example, uh, I should have pre-planned this, but for example, this box here gets called next. Then if you're in single player, you've got your init files. Uh, then after that, you've got all of your uh, functions uh, and scenario attributes, which are the scenario attributes are these ones in here. So these change certain details about certain things. This also is worth noting that this includes its own init box, which is called here. Uh, then your persistent functions are called. We're going to talk about them later. Uh, that only really matters in multiplayer. Then your modules happen, and that's important to remember. In single player, your modules don't initialize until after your init is. But in multiplayer, they initialize before. So keep that in mind when you're doing things. Uh, these are basically uh, ways of splitting up your init file. I'm going to be talking about a better way to do that that basically ensures you don't get weird ordering from happening because these can happen in sort of unexplained orders sometimes and things can get weird. Uh, then you have things with post init. I don't think we'll be talking about that too much. Uh, and then in multiplayer, your init SQF gets called. Now your init SQF is basically a file that will get called for every unit, uh, every every player that joins and every and the server. Uh, and that was basically the script.sqf that we were talking about just before. Anyway, that's basically it for script localization. Uh, I'm going to be going into much more detail in future. Hopefully this will make a lot more sense once we've gone through it all. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically all of that I wanted to get out of the way now uh, before I move on to the other scripts and things like that in the following weeks. Alright, thanks guys. Sorry about it being slightly longer than usual. Enjoy.